Good afternoon to you. Mark's out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is Friday, June 12th. I had to look down at the calendar to make sure. Friday, June 12th, 2020. Hope it's going well for you. Kind of rainy here, yucky in Wilmington, North Carolina, where I am broadcasting, recording this, whatever you call it. Cold front stalled across the area, or at least slowing down. Had some showers and storms and some heavy rain and Man, I should have just slept all day. But anyway, here we are. Let's take a look at what's happening in the tropics. We'll start off with a look from at the National Hurricane Center from their perspective. Nothing going on in the Atlantic right now. Same is true for the Eastern Pacific and the Central Pacific. If we look at a satellite animation here, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits, the infrared satellite imagery, you notice a few things here that I can point out. Here's that frontal boundary Let's use a different color, shall we? Maybe yellow. Here's the frontal boundary uh, draped across portions of the east. It's kind of stalling out a little bit of convective activity associated with it. So a few rumbles of thunder every once in a while up the U.S. 17 corridor in the Carolinas. And uh, that's about it. Most of the rest of the country here, null and void of any major storminess or anything like that. Just the heat's getting ready to start building seen a lot of talk about that that we're going to have a very hot summer ahead down in the southwest caribbean a little cluster of showers and thunderstorms but by and large the upper level winds still moving pretty fast here out of the west and the west southwest across the deep tropics large upper level low spinning here to the east of bermuda and a general sinking pattern of the atmosphere not rising but sinking so it's anti against what we would look for uh, for development. But there are tropical waves dotted throughout this region coming off of Africa, and those are going to make their way west with time. And every once in a while, one of them might flare up. We saw that yesterday and the day before with this tropical wave that is currently moving into the eastern Caribbean. So sometimes they do bring some showers and storms and gusty winds and uh, Really, in the month of June, you don't worry about them developing much more than that. You can also see in this satellite animation the outline here of the Saharan dust that's being ejected at the 700 millibar level, roughly off the coast of Africa here. It pushes out with that African easterly jet, and it, it just literally throws this huge mass of warm, dusty, particulate-laden air into the Atlantic and it moves across sometimes ending up all the way over here into Texas you can track this now on various products from the different websites that are out there NASA uh, Ryan Maui's site that he works with the weathermodels.com and others really neat to be able to track that aerosol spread if you're so inclined those tools are out there but that's typical very very typical for June not a surprise at all. wanted to do a little close-up for our friends down in the Caribbean and uh, show you this tropical wave that's moving through. Very, very weak overall, the wave signature. But it is there, and there are some showers and a few thunderstorms uh, that have moved through portions of the central leeward islands here in the trade winds. You notice right here in Puerto Rico, the lightning count there, picking up a few lightning strikes, the orographic lift, and that's a fancy way of saying that there are mountains in Puerto Rico that helps to make the air go up and you get these showers and thunderstorms and uh, some heavy rain with those, some lightning in there, so just be mindful of that. But overall, the trade's not too strong through here. Uh, I heard from one of our patrons in St. Thomas, uh, Timothy, telling me about how the water temperatures around his region and the Virgin Islands over here are very warm and very little in the way of trade winds. It's not like it's just screaming through there, the trades, that is. And you can also see those upper-level winds going this way. So you've got the tropical wave coming this way and the upper-level winds in the opposite direction. That, among other reasons, is why we won't have development from these systems right now. Once we get into July which is not that far away, you know, maybe a month or so from now, uh, I'll start to get a little bit more concerned with uh, the, the, the development chances of these tropical waves, but that's not happening anytime soon. 
wanted to just take a real quick look at climatology again just to remind you of where we are and where we are headed. Uh, we are approaching this little bump right here in the climatological graph, an uptick in hurricanes and tropical storms. But overall, these first few weeks and couple of months really, as you know, are nice and slow. And then the big ramp starts upward after August and especially mid-August. So we have a long way to go, and there's a reason behind that, that the atmosphere and the ocean have to work together, and it just takes time. Thank goodness. Uh, this is the first 10 days of June, and as you notice, we don't have much activity anywhere in the basin except right here. And that's exactly where we saw, for the most part, the origins of Cristobal. Came out of that Central American gyre and made landfall up here in Louisiana. So we've already had a June storm this year. And you know what? If it wasn't for the interaction that it had down here in Central America, Mexico, and Guatemala in vicinity, in my opinion, Cristobal would have been a hurricane. So anyway, this is the second 10 days. This is where we are now. It gets a little busier, a few little spots out here. These are points of origin and the tracks. This goes through 2015, though. Come on, update this. It can't be that hard, hopefully. Uh, it'd be nice to see this get updated, though. But you notice there's nothing out between Africa and the Caribbean at this time uh, time juncture, juncture in time, whatever you want to call it. And as you move on through the last third of June, uh, it's pretty much the same. But you do notice you got this one little one out here. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> it's by itself. I say little one. Uh, I don't remember which storm that is. I don't have everything memorized, but my point is once you get towards that last part of June, and yes, especially the first 10 days of July, then, come on internet, then the uh, the Cape Verde uh, tropical waves there, the Cabo Verde tropical waves, begin to um, get more robust, and we need to pay attention uh, even 1851 to 2015 is not that much time if you think about it in the geologic sense. But nevertheless, this is what we look at. Climatology, you look at the past, and yes, there are a few points of origin once we get into early July, that first third. And we will revisit this uh, every once in a while just to refresh you, refresh you on what's going on and what to look for down the road. It can be a guide. All right, Atlantic Basin, I uh, wanted to point out, remember I told you we were going to look at the Gulf of Mexico and the cold wake left by Cristobal. And there it is right there, starting to fill back in <clears throat> with these warm anomalies as we thought it would. Um, we'll use black to outline it right there. So that's starting to fill back in, and the Gulf will warm right back up, especially if we don't have any other disturbances coming through. Certainly, we're not having any big cold fronts, no Arctic intrusions. That time has come and gone. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of the tropical Atlantic here, wow, really, really warming up compared to average, as is the northeast subtropical Atlantic while we develop the La Nina signature. Colder than average anomalies, departures from normal. In the Pacific, we can see this plotted on a graph, courtesy of Levi Cowan's great work at Tropical Tidbits. The 3.4 index, that's just a certain region of the Pacific now, negative uh, 0.35. So it's about a third of a degree Celsius below average right there. Uh, briefly dipped to below the half degree Celsius threshold that we typically see La Nina develop. But basically we are in cold neutral conditions or cool neutral and we're not in an El Nino. That's the number one factor here is that clearly we are not in an El Nino. So that right there, the cold neutral look to the, we'll put a big negative in here for the Pacific. There's a negative sign. The Atlantic, we get a big positive sign. And as we've talked about, the season is forecast to be quite busy. And conversely, if we compare, you know, this is the Pacific, there's the Atlantic, the main development region, as we call it, right there's the region. And look, we're almost back up to a half a degree Celsius on the positive side. We were quite warm here through April. It dipped off a little bit, and now it was then it was steady. Now it's increasing again. 
and most of the modeling is indicating, as I'm showing here from Ben Knowles' latest tweet, this is the Jamstech, which is the uh, another model, the Japanese model, the, um, uh, I believe that's, yeah, the Jamstech, right? Japanese, um, I don't know what, I'll have to ask him, what does Jamstech stand for? I should Google it in real time here, but I can't because I got to get on with it. But nevertheless, uh, another climate model indicating as we move through time that, uh, I don't want to stop here, there's September, October, November. Very, very warm Atlantic overall with the cold Pacific showing up. And that's the setup. It really is for a very busy Atlantic hurricane season. We've talked about this, and I don't mean, you know, it's just like I talk about when the doctor tells you, hey, your blood pressure is going up and your weight's going up and you need to do some things. Every time you visit him, he tells you that. Of course, you don't see your doctor every day like you see me, but you, you want to know these things. You know, you might not want to hear them. No, I don't want to hear that. But at least you can know and do something about it, whatever it is. You know, your health, um, your financial situation. Someone says, hey, you're spending a little too much money kind of calm down a little bit. You know, you don't want people nagging at you, but you appreciate the advice and the information, hopefully you do, in the long run. And so I'm just keeping this out in front because we have a lot of other things going on. We do. Geopolitical, the COVID-19 stuff, uh, the revolution going on, and it is in the United States with all of the uh, racial tensions and whatnot. We have a tremendous amount of of um, other things pulling at our attention and you know we got to make sure we keep focused on the weather when appropriate but also don't lose sight of the fact that there's nothing going on right now to worry about I'm not trying to worry you I'm trying to educate you and enlighten you so that you are ready when something does come and hopefully we can keep you alive that's my number one goal keep you alive and we can worry about the rest as time progresses right and right now, we don't have to worry about anything, and that's the best news as we head into the weekend. All righty, speaking of the weekend, I am going to take the next two days off from posting videos. I'll still post on Twitter, on Patreon, on Facebook, a couple of graphics or something, I'm sure, just to keep my presence out there. But there's no reason to produce videos Saturday or Sunday coming up, because I'm going to spend time working on my new series, The Hurricane Highway, it is a television type series that I am self-producing. It'll be available to patrons. It already is the first four episodes that I've completed, available to all of our patrons and our Hurricane Track Insider supporters. It's going to be available to everybody through Amazon Prime Video uh, as a seasonal season one. It's episodic, and anyway, I got to work on that. I've got four episodes to go, and I'm getting behind here, so I'm going to spend the weekend. Uh, really catching up on that. I'm working on episode four, which is all about the weather balloon project. It's funny because I finished episode five before I finished episode four. Go figure. So I've got episodes one, two, three, and five done. Episode four, six, seven, and eight, I, I still need to finish those. And uh, the last episode, episode eight, will be all about the typhoon, Typhoon Tisoy, that our buddy Brent went and intercepted last year in the Philippines, our branching out into the West Pacific theater, as we call it, began last year in December with Tisoy. And that's how we end season one of the Hurricane Highway. So I got to work on that, all right? So you guys have a great weekend. Again, I'll be posting, posting on the other social media using graphics and whatever, like I mentioned, but no videos until Monday, all right? There you go. You can take a break from me. Have a good weekend as always. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it very, very much. Be safe out there this weekend, and I'll see you back on Monday.